we're going to look at a great little tool accessory for your fire tv stick or your fire tv cube it enables you to do lots of things it enables you to do adb shell it enables you to install apps remove them remotely control your stick it really is a swiss army knife for the fire tv stick if you've got a pc hold tight more details coming up shortly don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So as I say, this accessory for your Fire TV stick or Fire TV cube, I have found to be invaluable. It can do loads of things. It can install apps, it can remove apps, it can enable you to put in ADB commands. It can enable you to remotely control your stick, amongst other things. So we're going to have a look at it today. It's an app you, first of all, install on your PC. But what we need to do, first of all, is we just need to get our Fire Stick or Fire TV Cube ready to accept this app. So first of all, just need you to press and hold the home button on the remote control till this appears, then let go. Go across to settings, middle button, then go down and across to my Fire TV, middle button. And then we want to go into developer options. Now, if you don't have developer options, then go into about middle button, Make sure that the name of your stick or cube is highlighted and press the middle button on the remote control seven times or keep pressing it until you see that message at the bottom of the screen that says no need, you're already a developer. Once you see that come up, you can let go. Press the back button on your remote control once and then you should see developer options. Go into that middle button and where you've got ADB debugging, if it's switched off like mine is, then switch it on. So press the middle button on the remote control if it's shown off. And there you go, that turns it on. Press the back button once. Now we need to go up to about again and back into that. So middle button on the remote control. Then we need to go down to network and we need to make a note of the IP address. That's just there. On mine, it shows 192.168.10.107. Yours will be different. So don't make a note of mine. Make a note of whatever is in yours. That's very important because you are going to need it later. And if you get it wrong, this video ain't going to work. So let's just go across now to our PC. What I'm going to do first of all on my PC is I'm going to open my browser, which is Microsoft Edge. And then I'm going to type in the address bar at the top of the screen, jocala.com so that's jocala.com all in lowercase and no spaces then once you've typed that in press enter or return on your keyboard and if you've typed in the correct address then you should see this screen here so what we want to do is we want to scroll down a bit and we want to click on adb link apologies for the fisheye lens here but uh, click on adb link 2 and then scroll down and we're looking for this here, ADB link 2.5.7 for Windows. Now yours may be different, the number may be different by now, but just avoid all these other sort of download buttons here. It's this one that's in text just under the download section just there that you want. So click on that and then it should start downloading or it might say to you, that it isn't commonly downloaded, make sure you trust it before you open it. So if you do see that, move your mouse over that, click on the three dots just to the right of the bin there, and then click keep. And then it'll ask you one more time, it'll give you a warning here. Now, there's nothing wrong with this file, it's just not a very common, file, commonly downloaded file. So Edge is basically saying, are you sure you want this? Well, yes, I do. So click on the arrow to the right of show more, and then click on keep anyway, and that'll then start downloading. Now, once it's downloaded, should only take a few moments, you can click on open file. And then if you see this, do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? Then just move your mouse over. Yes, left click once and then click on next there. Make sure there's a tick in create a desktop shortcut. If there's not left click the box just to the left of it and then click next and then click install. And then once it's installed, we can click on finish and that should launch it. While we're waiting for it to launch, I'm just gonna close down Edge. So there we go. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to put in the IP address of our Fire Stick or Fire TV Cube. You know that address that I told you to, uh, to write down. 
So there we are. I've typed that in and I just click connect. And there you go. It comes up there in connected devices. It's got my IP address. And this means that I've now connected. Now, if I want to try this out and make sure that I'm connected, then just click on SCR CPY down there and then click on OK. And this should remotely control. There you go. My fire stick. I'm remotely controlling it from my PC. That's one of the great features here. So I'm just going to close this down by clicking on the cross just up there in the top right hand corner and that will close that down. If you end up with this box here, then just click on the cross there. There you go. We're back to this screen here. We've got file manager here. So if we want to have a look at the files that are on our Fire TV stick or cube, then we can do that under the SD card directory or we can go to storage. And there we go. There's not really a great deal that we can uh, we can look at in there, to be quite honest with you. But we can pull files, copy files, move them, edit them, reset them push them, delete them. We can make a directory or we can rename them. But if you don't know what you're doing, then stay away from this because you could end up damaging apps or worse still, your complete fire stick. So if you want to install an APK, so say for instance, you want to download an APK file from somewhere, then you can do it by clicking on install APK. And all you do is let's just open a browser up and I'm just going to go to my downloads page on my website. So CW tech.co.uk forward slash D and here if I just scroll down and say for instance I wanted to install virus total mobile then I can click on that there let's just close this ad it's going to download onto my computer so the next thing I want to do is once it's downloaded I just want to close edge go into install APK then just go to downloads find it there there you go there it is double click on it and then confirm by clicking yes there you go it's confirmed that the APK is installed so let's go and have a look see if it has installed I'm just going to bring the screen up a little bit bigger but as you can see there there you go it has actually installed so let's just okay that I'm just going to move this window a bit further out the way there and if, say, for instance, I wanted to uninstall it, then I can go to uninstall APK. Now, you need to be, again, you need to be very careful here because the actual uninstall APK shows you the label names for the, the, the apps. It's, it's, it sometimes can be very difficult to determine what app is is what and you want to be really careful because if you uninstall the wrong thing here then uh, you could end up with a broken fire stick now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to try and filter out the app i want to remove so it's i'm going to remove the app that i've just installed so i'm just going to type up there it was called virus total so i'm just going to type up there virus and then click on apply in the filter and there you go. It actually does show me com.funnycat virus total. Now, I'm 100% sure that is the app that I want to delete or uninstall. So I click on that, click on OK, and it says uninstall com.funnycat.virus total. Click on yes, but if you're not sure, click on no. And the best way, if you're really not sure, is to just uninstall it from your Fire Stick as you normally would. So I'm going to say yes to that and we'll see if that disappears. There you go. And it's uninstalled and it has disappeared. We've also got an option here to go into ADB Shell. So if you've ever had to type in one of those long commands, and I know some of my videos do have those, then that gives you the option to uh, type them in on a proper keyboard rather than having to type them in on uh, the Fire Sticks on screen keyboard, which sometimes can be a bit of a ball ache. So uh, that gives you a great little option there. So let's just close that down by clicking on the cross in the top right hand corner. You've got here console, which just gives you the Windows console there. Nothing fancy. I don't really know why you'd need that, to be quite honest with you. Uh, you've got refresh ADB, which if the connection has stopped or goes slow for any reason, you can refresh it, get the connection back. Stop ADB, which basically disconnects you from the fire stick. There's also a screen cap function, which enables you to capture the screen. And if you click on that, 
it will do a screenshot of your Fire Stick or Fire TV Cube, and it'll either copy it to one or two places. If tells you where it's copied it to, then follow that. Normally, that would be under the yellow folder, and then go into this PC, go into your C drive, and then go into Users, and then click on your username, and then you should find the file in there somewhere, usually at the bottom of the screen, and it'll have that name there, not that name that's on my screen, but whatever's on your screen. Now, if like mine, it's saying it's copied to and they've left that blank, then where you're gonna find it is probably going again to this PC, your local C drive, and then look for ADB link to, double click that, and there would be the file there, as you can see. I'm just going to double click on that, and that will show you a screen capture of my screen that I took a minute ago on the Fire Stick. Let's just close that down, and let's just close this window down here, and then let's just OK that. We've also got a keypad feature, which enables you to use that just as you would your Fire Stick remote. A couple of features don't tend to work, but most of them do. I think sleep doesn't work. Menu doesn't seem to work. You've got the select button there. So if you go to a particular app and then you want to go into it, you just hit select and that'll go into that. So let's just go across, say, to YouTube. Click on select and there we go, it goes into YouTube. The back button works just like it does on the remote control. So you can go back. Uh, to come out and uh, and then select that you want to come out. I haven't tried the fast forward, rewind and play pause buttons, but obviously give them a go. And you've got an exit button down the bottom there, which just exits you out of the on-screen keyboard. It's probably easier to be quite honest with you to use the keys on your keyboard. You've also got an option if you want to quickly connect to a device, you can set it up as a uh, as a device in here. So if I click on new and what it will do is it'll ask us for a description. This is the name of our device. So let's just do 4K Max because that's what it is. And the IP address, let's just type in my Fire Sticks IP address as I did earlier and then click on save down there. Now, if I ever want to go into that particular device, then I can just select it from the list here if I've got more than one and then just click connect and that will connect us straight up to it. So there are plenty of other options up here. I'm not sure if they work, uh, but I must admit, unless you know what you're doing, I wouldn't try using these, especially you don't want to reboot into recovery or reboot into bootloader. You've got a few utilities here. Not all of these will apply to the Fire Stick or Fire TV Cube because this is a general app for many Android devices. I mean, one thing does, if you want to go to system information there, that does seem to work. That tells you the uh, system architecture, the Fire OS version, which isn't strictly true because that is actually the Android version rather than the Fire OS version. The device name and the manufacturer. There's also more of a little nifty help guide there if you need to look into it further. But as I say, mainly this is for doing the basics. It's mainly for installing apps. If you've got to type in a, a particularly long ADB shell command, this can help. It can also help if you want to do a screen capture and if you want to do a little remote control session. So there you go, a great little app. And if you do find it useful, then please consider donating. Hit that donate button and go and donate to this really great app. I hope you like this video. And if you did, consider donating to us too. Hit that thanks button and make that donation. If you're in the market though for a new VPN, a Fire Stick, a Fire TV Cube or Fire Stick accessories, then have a look in the description down below. We've got some great offers for you. Donating or buying through those links really does help support this channel. It helps me to be able to dedicate more time into researching and bringing you these videos. And whilst you're at my YouTube channel, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos for you right here, right now, covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully, whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some time and money.